Hi everyone. This is a second part of our uh, uh, Let's Read Revelation series. Um, do go back and look at the first part um, if you missed it, as it just explains why why we're doing this. But I thought, you know, um, yeah, this is just really to to help think and understand what's going on in the world because revelation is a book which is all about uh, the things that are going on um, that, that are going to be going on in the world until jesus returns and it helps to kind of interpret uh, what's happening and, and for for christians to, to understand and so um yeah we read through the first three verses of revelation didn't get very far through but today we're going to read through the rest of chapter one and i've just got a, a one or two brief thoughts about it at the end but um, i do encourage you to to read through it think about it yourself and add any thoughts that you have um down in the comments below and hopefully that we can you know together um help uh, shed some insight into to what's happening so, um, yeah, let me read it first. So I'm going to read from verse four through to um, through to verse 20 at the end of chapter one. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. I turned round to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash round his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive for ever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Okay, so that that's the um, the opening chapter of John's Gospel. So let's go through it quickly. I have a few brief thoughts to share, and I'm sure um, you have some. Uh, you'll have some thoughts as well. Um, but this is this is what struck me as I was reading through it, and as I've been thinking about it, um, which is it starts out with this kind of little um, doxology, you know, the praise to God, um, uh, grace and peace to him uh, from the him who is and who was and who is to come. And, you know, it's just it starts out by declaring that God is, was, is and will be. And, you know, it, it's that all encompassing nature of time, isn't it? looking at the the past the present and the future and saying god is is all encompassing 
And it's this kind of amazing vision of who who God is. That's how it starts. And it's intended, I think, to be an encouragement to us. And it, it is intended to be to, to focus us on, you know, it says, you know, to him who loves us has freed us from our, our sins by his blood and has made us to be kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father to, and to him be glory and power. So it's sort of encouraging us with that that gospel message of forgiveness and freedom in Christ and, and making us into a people, um, bringing us into the kingdom of God. And um and it says all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So it's saying that if you're if you are with Jesus, then you're on the winning team. And that's what I think this is this is there for. It's this is one of the you know, the big message of Revelation. If you're with Jesus, you are on the winning team. And that is very good news and that's really encouraging news that's why john needed to start with it it's what it's what we need to hear especially when we're facing times of of trial or times of uh, discouragement and again it's repeated in verse 8 um, i am the alpha and the omega so alpha and omega you may know were the first and the last letters of the um the greek alphabet which um john was writing in in greek um so it's kind of like saying i am the a to the to the Z, although it doesn't sound so good in English, does it? The Alpha and the Omega. Um, says the Lord God, who was, uh, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. You know, all of of heaven and earth, p- p- um, past, present, and future, are in God's hands, the Almighty's hands, and di- and He directs the course of history. And um, yeah, that is something which is which is meant to to encourage us, to remind us that. Um, you know Christ will come with the clouds and um, and if we are with him then that will be victorious with him and then we move on to this amazing vision of Christ and um, John just says I John your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus and you can just hear those words I mean John at this time was on the island of Patmos. It says because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So um, he was had been preaching the gospel and he'd been put on this prison island and that, that's what it was there for. I think it's an island I was reading it was about eight miles by four miles across something like that. So a small island which they used for um, for prisoners. And it was because of of his his Christian preaching. And this kind of is beginning to set things up, isn't it? This is beginning to set up what's going to come in the rest of Revelation. And this is where I think we begin to see the relevance of this to our current situation. Because we are beginning to see increasing hostility once again towards Christians. You think about, for example, the um, the street preacher. Uh, I read of a, a street preacher who was arrested um, not so long ago. In fact, a number of street preachers have been arrested. You think of the, the many ways in which um, it is actually Christians who have been who have been persecuted. And you know, think for example of how in the lockdowns it was the churches that were closed to start with. Um, obviously, everything was closed. Well, not everything, but you know, the churches were deemed non-essential and were closed, and largely they did uh, they did comply. And that is, I think, it, it's this situation now that John is describing here. He's describing this kind of the, the way that the world does um, persecute Christians and the way that you know the world does reject and you know want to imprison and want to silence um, Christians. And, and John says that's and I've been suffering. Um, and yes, we have to suffer patiently. It's patient endurance, he says, for the sake of the kingdom of God. Um, because of that testimony, because I want to speak out, I've been silenced. Um, and so he says, um, he hears a voice which says, write and send it to these churches. And, and if you look on a map, it sort of forms a, a semicircle. Um, and I won't won't show that right now. But we ha- we have this amazing vision of Jesus. 
And I mean, it's just, it's beyond anything, really, anything, isn't it? This this amazing vision, Um, one someone like a son of man, and um, that was the way that Jesus often referred to himself. By the way, son of man, um, which refers to a vision from Daniel, Um, and uh, we won't go into all of that now. Um, But um, yeah, I mean, his voice is a sound of rushing waters. Um, his eyes were like blazing fire, his face shining like the sun in all its brilliance. And um, and you just think, wow, you know, that's the that's the, the Jesus that we worship, because it's very easy, I think, at the at the moment. Perhaps not just at the moment, um, but to, to make Jesus too small um and to say that you know Jesus is not capable of of defending us or protecting us or you know um he's not the lord of all and john sees a vision here of christ in all his glory and that's meant to encourage us because it says yes at the moment the world makes it look like jesus is small than insignificant but he's not. Look at what he's really like, and that's what John is saying here. That's what that's what's it, what is uh, what it is intended for. And when John sees him, he says he fell at his feet. I fell at his feet as though dead. And that's the response that that we should have to to Jesus. It's just to fall down and to bow down and to worship. Um, you know, when we see Jesus for who he really is. But. Um, Jesus placed his right hand on me and says, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So we've had the Alpha and the Omega. We've had the past, present, future. Jesus says, I am the first and the last. So similar kind of thing to what we've, what, what, what has been said already of, um, of God the Father. I am the living one. I was dead and now look. I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. So Jesus says, I I died, but now I am living. I am alive forever and ever. And you think of what happened in the Gospels. You know, Jesus went into the tomb and on the third day he rose from the dead and he rose, you know, forever, eternally. He always lives. And not only that, he says, but I hold the keys of death and Hades. So he is the one who ultimately um, holds the keys of the kingdom, the keys of um, those who will who will join with with the Lord in eternal life and live forever. And Hades is sometimes um, uh, translated hell. And that is the place of the dead, the place where those who do not know God um, will will go forever, and we'll come on to that more as we go through uh, Revelation. But I just you know to kind of bring this round to to a reflection on on lockdown and on the church's uh, response to it. Something which does strike me as I read through this is: does the church's response to the lockdowns over the last um, 16 months or you know give or take does it show that the church as a whole has really believed in this message do we believe that god is um was and is and is to come who controls uh, everything and do we believe that jesus is worthy of all worship and especially i think that line do not what what he says to John do not be afraid do not be afraid i was dead now i'm alive forever and ever and i hold the keys of death and hades and i just thought you know what what has the the, the way that the church has been acting over the last year or so it's almost like it's it's given the impression that it's the social distancing and the masks that hold the key of death and hades that you know, oh, goodness me, if we all stop wearing masks, oh, my word, we'll all die. And then that'll be awful. But actually, you know, Jesus said, no, I hold the keys of death and Hades. You don't die when you're not wearing a mask. You die when I say. 
and especially when you're dealing with you know something which is which is invisible you know like a virus something which is really uncontrollable by by human beings then it's something which you know Jesus says I hold those keys and do not be afraid now, as I said in another video, it's one of the most oft-repeated commands in the Bible. Do not be afraid. The one we should be afraid of, we should fear, is, is the Lord. And because He, because of his love for us, because Jesus has conquered death, then we do not need to be afraid of anything else. And it does seem to me like the way that the church has been acting over the last um, you know, uh, year and a, and a half is this almost being afraid of covid and being afraid of um you know of a virus where actually we should be we be bold and we should be seeking to obey so just to um, kind of put this into um into a real life situation singing in churches for example um to, is it right for churches not to sing given that Jesus is worthy of all worship and given that he does hold the key of death and Hades. Should we not be singing out because it's not safe enough? And what does that say about our vision of Jesus if we're not singing? So I really, you know, reading through this, it does make me wonder, does the church actually believe in this Jesus? And it makes me question, I have to be honest. So anyway, that's those are my reflections. Do add uh, your reflections down below. And I, I really do hope that you enjoy um, reading Revelation with me. There's, um, yeah, we've got a couple of chapters where we've got looking at letters to the churches. Um, and then after that, we're going to be going into the kind of the more um, symbolic um, bit of Revelation, which is um, people find a bit more tricky. But I think it's, it's really important to be looking at um, again. Um, I feel like it might be appropriate just to say a, a short prayer uh, as we come to the end of this as well. So uh, why don't we do that and then and then I'll, I'll finish. Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, for the book of Revelation. Thank you for giving it to John. And I pray that you would help us to understand and see more of who Jesus is as we go through this book. And help us to know what that means for how we should be. Um, so please help us and be with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much everyone for joining me. Don't forget to click the like button um, if you appreciate these videos. And if you appreciate these as well, there's the the uh, the Buy Me A Coffee link as well, which will be down there. And um, yeah, thanks so much everyone. I really do appreciate all your all your support and the people who say that they, they enjoy these videos and so on. So I hope to see you again next time. I, I might not do a revelation video uh, each time. I might do a, you know, um, alternate between doing looking at revelation and looking at um, uh, other, other kind of topics. I've got a few, few ideas in mind. So, um, and yeah, yeah, if you can subscribe, if you'd like to get these, or you can um, go on the mailing list, um, which will be on my website. Thanks so much everyone. And uh, God bless.